Hello, I'm Georgina Lamb and I'm the CEO at the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation. Thank you all so much for taking an interest in our virtual wildlife ball, which we originally broadcast live to your living room on Friday the 6th of November 2020. We were absolutely delighted that nearly 500 of you tuned in to learn more about our conservation work across Africa and Asia. And thanks to you all, we raised in excess of £80,000 to support our amazing ground-based conservation partners. I really hope you enjoy this virtual event as much as we did in making it. So sit back, enjoy, and please, if you can, support our work with a donation using the link below. Thank you so much. Oh, aha, you caught me. Um, very good evening to you. And um, this is our very first virtual, can you believe, wildlife ball. Who'd have thought there'd ever be such a thing? Anyway, thank you very much for joining us. Um, especially as I know that instead of tonight and joining us this evening and giving us all your money, you could be watching, I don't know, EastEnders or Autumn Watch or Top of the Pops 1990 or whatever else is on tonight. Um, sorry to those of you joining us from, let me see where we've got, we've got people from Bermuda and Zimbabwe, Zambia, United States, lots of other countries tuning in from all over the world. You won't know what I'm talking about, it's British television, but this is a far better way to spend your Friday evening or morning, wherever you are in the world. I'm Mark Harwardine and my role tonight is to lead you through the next hour or so. And I'm sure you're perfectly capable of doing that on your own, but I'm just keeping tabs on everything and making sure that you do give us all your money. The great news is that we've already raised, let me see, £49,979, which is absolutely amazing. We've, we've barely even started. So thank you all very much for that. And remember this, if you do give us loads of money, you'll sleep like a baby tonight, I guarantee, knowing you've done something really good. Anyway, I hope you're all doing okay um, in whatever form of lockdown you happen to be in at the moment. I'm in England's lockdown too, and I have to say I'm thanking all the wildlife in the garden for helping me to keep sane. I'm sure you know what I mean, the health benefits of nature. Would have been lovely to have seen you all in the flesh, as it were. That sounds a bit weird, but you know what I mean. Next year, we're going to have a real life wildlife ball to celebrate lots of different things. Anyway, who cares? We've got a fantastic lineup for you tonight, including performances by the supremely talented West End Kids and the amazing soprano, Laura Wright. We're also going to be hearing from David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation's CEO, Georgina Lamb, and we're checking in on our elephant orphanage in Zambia. And I'll tell you, if that doesn't make you want to sell your house, and donate all the proceeds to elephants, then nothing will. You'd have to be a lump of rock. And we'll be meeting a very special nine-year-old who's been raising money for pangolins. And I'm sure you all know about pangolins. If you don't, you will very soon. Um, now, in my notes here, it says um, housekeeping. I'm not sure what that really means, given we're all safely at home. Um, the only possible emergency I can think of is not raising enough money, and that's definitely not gonna happen. <laughs> But, you know, I'll go through the motions. So I guess if there is a fire in the kitchen, run into the living room. And um, that's about it. By the way, I hope you're all wearing ball gowns and dinner suits. I was told I could wear anything I like from a dinner suit to pyjamas. And that's exactly what I've done. Dinner suit. And can you see pyjamas? I don't think I'd have fitted into my dinner suit trousers if I hadn't worn the pyjamas, eaten so much during lockdown. I'm also wearing my um, Siberian tiger bow tie. I hope you can see that. I'm sure you've all got one of those. And by sheer coincidence, it's largely thanks to the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation, who is supporting tonight, that there are any Siberian tigers left in the world. So that's good. Thank goodness for David Shepherd, I have to say, and his extraordinary legacy. David was a, a very great friend for many years. He had more energy and did more for wildlife conservation than pretty much anyone I've ever known. And personally, I've been supporting the foundation since it started, which was, I think, about 36 years ago. Obviously, I was very young 36 years ago, but I've been supporting it pretty much all my adult life. So I should say our aim this evening was to raise at least £50,000. That was the original target. But I'm thinking maybe we should forget that, because as far as I can see, we've only got... 
21 pounds to go. So we're gonna aim higher and try and raise much, much more. We won't have a target. We'll just re raise as much as we possibly can, more the merrier. And I'll tell you how we're gonna do that in a little bit. Now, sorry to be a little bit serious for a moment, but we really do need to raise this money because to be blunt, you know, if you think about it, climate change, uh, the biodiversity crisis, everything else conservation has basically been left behind and forgotten amid our obsession with the pandemic. And I know it's challenging times for everyone, but charities are really suffering particularly badly. And it's hard enough raising money in the best of times, let alone in the midst of COVID-19. So let's kick off on a positive note with a message from a very familiar face who supported the foundation for many, many years. Here's Joanna Lumley. Hello, I'm Joanna Lumley, and it's wonderful to be with you at this year's virtual DSWF Wildlife Ball. I've scribbled down a few notes here, so forgive me if I read them. With the world facing such unprecedented times and the pangolin now becoming known for all the wrong reasons due to its apparent connections with the pandemic, I'm proud to be DSWF's pangolin ambassador. Pangolins are the most trafficked animals on earth, and it's not just the pangolin. The David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation helps so many projects working to save critically endangered mammals in Africa and Asia through education and the empowerment of rangers and their communities fighting on the front line of wildlife crime. It's not all doom and gloom. There is hope if we work together and continue to support organisations like DSWF. So please spread the message and give generously tonight and beyond. Together, we can turn the tide of extinction. In the words of my late friend, David Shepherd, please support DSWF today. Tomorrow will be too late. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Joanna. Um, I'm just looking at some of the messages people are uh, watching. We have um, George, the ginger lion watching, got Julia and Paolo from Rome. And I gather that Vicky Cole is very sp kindly spending her birthday with us tonight. So happy birthday, Vicky. Um, Vicky does a huge amount of work for the foundation. Thank you very much for all your support for wildlife conservation. Now you do realize that we're not actually here to have fun. Um, I'm kidding, we are hopefully, but we're also here to raise money. And I'd like to tell you what we're going to do because basically you have two choices. You can scan the QR code that hopefully you're gonna be seeing this, that's on the screen now. And in case you've no idea what that is, I don't really understand it myself. You simply open your smartphone camera, you point it at the QR code, and a link to the website will appear for you to open. It's, it's a little bit like, I don't know, like the government's contact tracing app except with one big difference in that hopefully this one's going to work. Um, the other thing you can do is to take your phone, not the landline, Melanie, I can see you grabbing that, your mobile phone, and you just go to www.dswfwildlifeball.com and that uh, address is coming up on the screen there. And um, off you go. Either way, you can get yourself registered and then as if by magic, you can actually donate all the money you have and you can bid for something really cool in the silent auction. Um, I've just been having a look at how the silent auction and going, and um, there's some fantastic stuff in there. Um, I was looking dinner with the lovely David Gower, and you don't have to talk about cricket. Sorry, David. Well, maybe you do have to talk about cricket. You just pay more if you don't want to. Um, and there's a fantastic private singing workshop with Laura Wright, who's going to be performing for us later, which is fantastic. And there's a wonderful Emily Lamb original. I've got an Emily Lamb original myself, and her work is unbelievably, mind-bogglingly, mind-boggling. It's fantastic. I've also seen that we've got a, a snow leopard safari. Now, that's something I've always wanted to do. I've been lucky over the years to have seen most of the large endangered mammals around the world, even once, and I hate to brag about this, but once I did actually see a wild giant panda in China that literally just stepped out on the path right in front of me, but I've never seen a snow leopard. And I see that the um, Safari One has already gone, or it's, it's got a successful beard, I don't think it's actually gone yet, by Liz O'Brien. Hi Liz, how are you? Um, I know her, not being weird. 
Um, that's great. But the Safari for two is still up for grabs. So I know, here's a fantastic idea. Why don't you buy a Snow Leopard Safari for two and take me with you? We'll have a blast. You've got until 10 p.m. tonight, which is when the silent auction closes. Now, before we get started, I really just like to take a couple of minutes to tell you why all this is so important and why so many of us involved tonight feel so passionately about conservation and what to do and want to do everything we possibly can to help. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that we are literally swinging a wrecking ball through the Earth's natural world. It's not surprising at all that we are in the middle of the sixth mass extinction and the annihilation of wildlife that we're witnessing today is completely unparalleled since the dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago. You know, the world is unraveling. The human footprint is so large. I mean, the world's population has more than doubled from 3.7 billion to 7.6 billion since 1970, but we're leaving virtually no space for anything else. And these are the two figures I'd like to give you. An estimated 1 million animals and plants are now threatened with extinction in the near future, 1 million. And in some ways, this next figure is even more shocking than that because since 1970, we have lost more than half of all wild animals on the planet, half of all the individuals. So just think about that for a moment. There are half as many individual wild animals now as there were 50 years ago. And that's happened in my lifetime. And that's really scary. But I have to say, we don't need scientific surveys to tell us what we can see with our own eyes. They're just conspicuously less wildlife around than there was. I remember as a kid when I was living in suburban Hampshire, I remember cuckoos provided the perpetual soundtrack to summer. And as I used to run across the lawn, loads of grasshoppers would leap up into the air. The flower beds were alive with umpteen species of butterflies. And we fed half a dozen hedgehogs on the patio every evening. And to be frank, it's just not like that anymore. Most of the wildlife that I took for granted as a kid has gone. And that's in a supposedly nature loving country with money to spend on conservation, less now, of course, but the principle is the same. And just imagine what's been happening in other parts of the world. I, I genuinely do fear for the future. I've spent my entire adult life working in conservation, and I believe we're now at a tipping point. We can no longer get away with business as usual. And that means that governments have to get on board and big business and we need dramatic change. So I guess the obvious question to ask, given the gravity of the situation, is does it really matter if individual endangered species like that we're talking about this evening, like elephants or rhinos or tigers disappear? Well, it obviously does, and for many reasons, but I'd like to give you two just to think about. You may remember that game, Pick a Stick. You drop a handful of sticks on the table in a jumbled pile, and then you take it in turns to remove them one by one without disturbing any of the other sticks. Now, if you imagine that each stick is a different species and the pile of sticks is their ecosystem, occasionally you might be able to get away with just removing one without seriously disturbing the others. But if you take out the wrong one or too many, eventually the whole thing, the whole pile of sticks, in other words, the whole ecosystem will collapse. And that's the risk of species by species extinction. But you know, there's another reason for caring about individual species. And I just want to mention it because it's quite simple, really. And I think if I was honest, this is why I care so much. And it's that the world would be a poorer, darker, lonelier place without them. And of course, lockdowns during the pandemic have shown just how much nature can light up our lives. So these and, and many, many other reasons are why I've supported the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation for so long. It gets things done, it punches above its weight, and it really does make a difference, as we're going to be hearing this evening. So it gives me fantastic pleasure to introduce the Foundation's inspirational, enthusiastic, and incredibly hardworking CEO, Georgina Lamb, who incidentally is also David Shepherd's granddaughter. And she, in turn, is going to be introducing some of the dedicated DSWF staff. So here's Georgina.
Hello everybody and thank you so much for joining us this evening at our first ever virtual wildlife ball. Although we're of course sad not to be able to see so many of you in person tonight as we normally would, we welcome the ability to connect with a truly global audience to highlight the need to protect some of the world's most endangered species as we evolve to end extinction. For those of you this evening who are new to us or less familiar with our work, the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation was established in 1984 by my late grandfather, the renowned wildlife artist and conservationist David Shepherd. My grandfather was passionate in his lifelong mission to raise awareness about the need to protect and conserve wildlife in their natural habitat. Never before has that mission been more important, a legacy which with your help we promise to uphold. To tell you a little bit more about our work, I am delighted to hand over to some of my colleagues and fellow wildlife warriors, the faces behind DSWF. Over the last 36 years, the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation has provided an unwavering voice for wildlife. We work with some of the most passionate and committed conservation partners across Africa and Asia who are working day and night on your behalf to turn the tide on extinction. By adopting a holistic approach to conservation, we acknowledge there's no single solution to protecting the world's endangered species. And while humans are so often the cause of environmental destruction, we're also the solution. People, as well as the wildlife we work to protect, are at the heart of the work we do here at the Foundation. Since our inception, we've been fighting wildlife crime through funding vital law enforcement programmes and undercover investigations into the illegal wildlife trade, a multi-billion dollar industry. We also engage in the international policy arena, fighting for the toughest protectionist policies for endangered wildlife. Although it's easy to despair when glancing at the headlines, our work is helping to tackle wildlife crime from grassroots to the world stage to ensure the future health of our planet and all the species that call her home. We work to protect some of the world's most vulnerable and endangered species by identifying sustainable solutions to human wildlife conflict funding research and the rescue, rehabilitation and release of orphaned animals, the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation continues to safeguard some of the world's most threatened mammals and wilderness areas. We have always believed that education and community participation is fundamental in ensuring a sustainable future for both people and wildlife and are proud to run a far-reaching UK-based education programme. We also fund extensive education and engagement work across Africa and Asia, supporting alternative livelihood initiatives and empowerment schemes for local communities. They are the custodians of their native wildlife. We aim to encourage future generations of conservationists to live in harmony and coexistence with wildlife. We also acknowledge the need to work with countries where demand for wildlife products exist. We fund public awareness and demand reduction campaigns across Asia, reaching millions of people, debunking the myths surrounding wildlife products and educating people as to the devastating impacts of the wildlife trade on wild populations. By continuing to work in this way, supporting over 17 projects in 14 different countries, we aim to tackle the root causes of biodiversity loss and ensure the natural world can be enjoyed for generations to come. We are a small but ambitious team, driven by the desire to make a meaningful difference to the natural world and give wildlife the voice it deserves. Thank you for standing with conservation this evening. And finally, just to add, if this year has taught us one thing, as the global pandemic sweeps the world like wildfire, it's just how fragile the health of our planet really is. At the heart of what we do is the belief that with your help, we can ensure that conservation and the restoration of global biodiversity is at the centre of everything we do in our everyday lives. I believe that together, today, we can help turn the tide on extinction. I do hope you all enjoy your evening. Thanks and back over to Mark.
Thank you very much, Georgina, and all the staff. Very well said. So it's, it's really lovely to see all the supportive messages coming in from all over the world here. Thank you all very much for getting in touch and for, for joining in. I gather the QR code isn't working so well. So I think I spoke a bit too soon at the beginning when I was boasting about it. Um, but if you'd like to donate or bid on the silent auction, um, then please go to the website and the address is up on the screen now. That'd be fantastic. So next up, we have a, a musical medley from the fantastically talented West End Kids. And I've just got to tell you how this came about because the West End Kids have pulled off the, I'd say almost impossible by filming this while they were in tier two lockdown in London. It's hard to believe, but when you watch this, just think about it. They each recorded their own part separately at home so they weren't even together when they did it. And they had to use green screens. If you're a vlogger or a TV producer, you'll know what that means. Basically, they, you can remove the background. They weren't really in the jungle. And then they've stuck it all together, edited it all together to make it look as one. It is absolutely brilliant. So think about that when you're watching. Um, with a medley of songs from the musical version of Tarzan, here are the West End Kids.
Well, thank you very much indeed to the brilliant West End kids. They went to so much trouble to produce that outstanding performance for us. So let's see how we're doing. We've raised so far £51,780, which is brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Um, there's still some sensational items in the silent auction. I'm just having a look. We've still got the Snow Leopard Expedition. Somebody needs to buy that to take me to see snow leopards. Um, we've got the Emily Lamb original painting. There's also five bronze pangolin sculptures available by the superbly talented Stephen Rue. Um, the original sketch of a tiger by David Shepherd himself hasn't gone. Um, and don't forget, all you have to do if you want to bid for something, we're still having trouble with that QR code, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. Is just go to the website that will be on the screen. Um, with your mobile phone and you can bid through that. So um, good luck and thank you again for supporting it. Now, it's time to check in with our conservation partners in Zambia, Game Rangers International. And they do all sorts of amazing work from anti-poaching operations to engaging local communities in conservation to wildlife rescue. And tonight we're going to be hearing about how they help to rescue, rehabilitate and release orphaned elephants who tragically have lost their mothers to poaching. So get your tissues ready and have a look at this. My name is Uchi Grace and I'm the research assistant at Game Rangers International Delight Elephant Nursery here in Zambia. Game Rangers has been in operation for the past 12 years. And so we were established in 2008 with initial and ongoing support from the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation. And our mission is to empower rangers and local communities to conserve nature. And we do this by taking a holistic approach across three main thematic areas, which are resource protection, wildlife rescue, and community outreach. So as research assistant, my main job and role is to monitor the behavior and to observe the behavior of any wildlife rescues that we have. Predominantly, we are taking care of young elephant calves and this is while they are being rehabilitated to be released back into the wild. To date, Game Rangers International has responded to 52 orphaned elephant rescues from all over the country. The majority have been the tragic victims of the ivory trade all traumatic human elephant conflicts in the communities bordering Zambia's protected areas. Often, these young cows have been without their mothers for days or weeks on end and are severely malnourished at point of rescue. Once stabilized, the orphans are transported here to the Delay Elephant Nursery where they receive round-the-clock care from our dedicated team of keepers. A big part of the rehabilitation process is the emotional healing and the elephant keepers play the vital role of mother to the calf, providing nutrition, safety, and comfort. Keepers support the calf as much as required. For the very young calves, this can involve lots of physical contact as a young calf sleeps alongside them. As soon as a calf is strong enough, it is introduced to the young herd of orphans at the nursery and encouraged to socialize and play. This is a critical part of their learning and social skill development and will help prepare them for reintegration as they grow older. Once they are physically large enough to be weaned for milk formula, usually around three years old, we transfer them to the release facility where they will meet the bigger herd. Elephants in this herd typically range from three to 13 years in age, and the youngsters join them in learning the importance of elephant etiquette and social hierarchy, which is a key part of wild elephant society. The elephants spend their days walking and feeding in the national park alongside their peers and are kept inside a large secured paddock overnight to ensure their defense against predators. It is only once the elephants reach an age and size large enough to defend themselves against lions that they start to wander further afield as part of this soft release process over a number of years. They would develop relationship with wild elephants and gradually become more and more independent until they are considered to be living in the wild. The bonds and relationships they have developed within the release herd are strong and will often drive the older elephants to return and check in with those whom have become their surrogate family. 
We track each of the other elephant's movements via satellite collars and work in close partnership with the Department of National Parks and Wildlife and GRI's resource protection and community programs to secure their future. Understanding behavior is essential for not only looking after orphaned elephants from the moment they are rescued, but it also gives them the best possible chance for a successful release. We take a science-driven approach to management. We collect many forms of data throughout the lives of the orphaned elephants. One such stream of data is our long-term behavioral observation study that aims to understand the behavior development of orphaned elephants, inform management and ensure welfare. All the data that we collect, um, whether it's the research data or the daily kind of observations that the keepers collect, everything goes into one place on the iPad and then it gets uploaded into um, an online platform that it means that myself or Theo or any mem member of management in Lusaka can just log on and see what's been happening. It was through this precise monitoring process that we're able to detect that the orphan head matriarch Chamilandu was newly pregnant. Chamilandu was rescued at just one and a half years old when her own mother was brutally shot by poachers. She was a strong, healthy and boisterous young elephant calf, but was severely traumatized by the loss of her mother and family, and in the early days would scream out in her sleep. Over the years, Chamilandu has grown into an incredibly affectionate and caring elephant, welcoming and comforting any young new orphans. She is confident, independent and by the age of 10, she was spending more nights outside of the protective boma exploring Kafue National Park, interacting with wild herds. In September 2019, Chamilandu returned to the release facility and made history by becoming the first orphaned elephant to give birth to a wild-born calf in Zambia. This special little calf was named Mutanzi David in memory of our founding father, the late great David Shepherd. He evidences a significant milestone in this incredible and emotional journey to restore Zambia's elephants back into the wild where they truly belong. Despite the challenging situation we and the rest of the world find ourselves in today, we are resolute in our commitment to protect, rehabilitate and release these amazing creatures back into the natural habitat. Without the support of David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation, we wouldn't be here today, and countless often elephants wouldn't be given a chance for tomorrow. Well, if that doesn't make you want to donate a little bit more, I don't know what will. And talk about job satisfaction. Imagine waking up every morning and thinking, I'm going to spend today caring for orphaned elephants. Hey, it's really nice to see in the comments, I was just having a look, that a lot of you are dressed up in ball gowns and black tie. And I see everyone in the Kleinwork family has made an effort. Well done, jolly good. Although um, Jan and Andy are in their PJs, I see. Anyway, we've raised £52,171 so far, which is great. It's creeping up. I think there'll be a jump in a minute when someone buys something really big in the silent auction. And with that in mind, the good news is that the QR code is up and running again. So you can use that with your mobile phone. That is still better than the government's tracing app. Um, anyway, now for something completely different. It gives me really great pleasure to introduce you to a very special young lad, Harry Doble, who did a 15 mile fundraising walk for the foundation's work to save pangolins. Actually, I'll let, you, I'll let him tell you the story. So here's Harry with his dad. So Harry has been interested in nature for as long as we can remember. For as long as I knew what it is. Yes. But like, stories. I, I never used to like 
playing with Thomas things, I used to always like. Ah, wow, wow. <laughs> um. What inspired you to do this walk, this pangolin walk? Why well, did you want to do it? I watched David Attenborough and Endangered Species, and I saw how they like treat the animals, and then I wanted to raise money for them, so I did a walk. Um. Because you were just keen to give something to help, weren't you? You wanted to give yeah. some money somehow. Um, but we thought the better way of doing doing it was to do a something sponsored. Because I was going to give in my money. That you I were, you were going but to. But I give... didn't have that much, so we. Yes. It was half a quarter of half of a quarter of this. Yes. Well, it was fun. At the first, I thought we were running around, and then. Slower, slower, slower. Uh, I did it with family and friends. Yes. Yeah. Um, and was it hard or easy? Did you? How did you find it? Started easy, ended hard. Yeah. I mean, you were running at first. At first, you? I was like running around. At the end. But by the end, we were walking very slow, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. But we got there. Yes, it was it was it was well over eight hundred pounds yes. that we raised for, for the charity, which we're really really happy about. Because we? we were aiming for one hundred. Yes, we were. I mean, I think we set the target. Was it hundred? No, yeah, we got hundred. Yeah. And um, we did a lot better than that. Didn't we? Yeah. So very very pleased about that. We got a couple of things from um, the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation, which we'll just show. Um, so Harry got. Um, pangolin. This pangolin, which he's actually really pleased with. Up. It can actually roll up. And we also got um, a certificate uh, as well, which um, is on display in our lounge. So. Oh, that reminds me, I'm also doing um, Christmas cards to sell for the Wildlife Foundation. That's right. Um, so we're. So we've got 50 of them and each one is one pound. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to hopefully raise a bit more money for um, the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation. David Shepherd. Um, well, both myself and my wife are incredibly proud of Harry um, for what he has achieved. Um, he is, um, you know, it's, a, it's amazing, frankly, what, what he's done. Um, you know, he... He's very, very selfless and always thinks of these animals before himself. Um, so yeah, incredibly proud of what he's done. Um, so I think we'll end it there and we'll say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Cuts. Well done, Harry. Thank goodness for people like you and, and the very best of luck with your next fundraising endeavour. I think he's a bit like a young mix of David Attenborough and Captain Tom Moore, isn't he? Hello to all you people messaging. You've got people from where we've got San Francisco, Sydney, the Isle of Man, Wyoming, West Sussex, Scotland, Florida, Nottingham, coming in from all over the place. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. The total so far, it did leap is 50, 57,097 pounds, 57,097 pounds. Thank you very much. Now let's go back to the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation CEO, Georgina Lamb, who has a very special message. My official welcome to you this evening is one tinged with great sadness as to the state in which we find the world and the environment, but also one which embraces the change and is excited by the opportunities we as an organisation now see. For those seeking silver linings, this year has shown us that when communities come together, change can be felt around the world. As an organisation operating in the environmental and biodiversity landscape, the impact of 2020 has been huge on us, on our conservation partners and on the wildlife we fight to protect. 
For those of us who work on the constant environmental knife edge, 2020, however, has just been the tip of the iceberg, one which has been melting for years, unchecked and unnoticed. The emergence of pandemics is entirely driven by human activity and the choices we, as a species, have made. By prioritising economic growth over ecological stability, we have become the architects of chaos. I've always found it a fascinating concept that the same hands who can cure cancer or create symphonies belong to the same species who are turning our planet to dust and driving others to extinction. Before I come to that time in the evening to talk about why we're all here, I would like to share with you a message from our partners, those most affected by wildlife crime and the pandemic born as a result. Thirty-six years ago, my late grandfather established the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation with the vision of protecting some of the world's most endangered species and to fight wildlife crime. Today, that vision and our unwavering conservation efforts are under threat. The global pandemic, sweeping the world like wildfire, has illustrated just how fragile the health of our planet and global biodiversity really is, and highlights the urgent need for greater protection and ecological respect. The tide of extinction is rising, and planet Earth and all the species that call her home are hurting. We have the power, however, to halt and reverse an environmental catastrophe, but only if we act today. We have hope that with your help, we can evolve to end extinction and give wildlife the fighting chance it deserves. Over the last few months, we have all watched the havoc being wrought on everyday life around us. Tragically, the devastation raining down on endangered wildlife and vulnerable communities has been drowned out by the global economic and social mayhem caused by the pandemic. In Zambia, we are witnessing the drying up of financial support, which alongside the collapse of tourism is uh, having a devastating impact on our work. Vulnerable communities are being forced to turn to poaching as a means of survival uh, because their lives are put in danger. The animals we are fighting to protect are actually in great danger than ever before. It has never been more important to support the brave men, women and communities fighting to keep our wildlife alive. We are not going to have another chance and we need to act today before it's too late. Here in Guinea, the impact of the COVID-19 has slowed the community outreach effort and dramatically reduced our ability to reach people and raise awareness for a greater species protection. We have respected the restriction of the government, meaning that all school visits have temporarily come to a halt, but we can't afford for future generations to miss out the lessons of today, which could inspire them to become the environmental leaders of tomorrow. With your help, together, today, we can turn the tide on extinction. In Namibia, we have seen firsthand an escalation in rhino poaching in areas previously considered safe. Criminal gangs are taking advantage of global uncertainty and local chaos threatening our wildlife. It has never been more important to support anti poaching initiatives protecting some of the planet's last remaining wildlife populations. Due to COVID pandemic since March 2020, some of the conservation activities of Aranak that involves the engagement of local communities has to be restricted, keeping in mind the social distance protocol. Fortunately, the K9 sniffer dog units of Aranak. Three units of canine sniffer dogs of Arayna is being supported by the David Shepard Wildlife Foundation are in operation in the field, in the rhino and tiger bearing areas of Sam, assisting the forest officials in their day-to-day -day visit to protect rhino, tigers and their habitats. Although COVID-19 has presented many challenges for protection of snow leopards here in Mongolia, the support we have received from 
David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation has allowed us to continue our work with our local communities, youth education, and alternative livelihood programs to ensure that we do not fail this incredible species. With your help, together, today we can turn the tide on extinction. Hi, my name's Tim Redford. I'm from Freeland Foundation. We work in partnership with David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation and we're here in the Western Forest Complex in Thailand and the rangers here with me have just come back from a weeks long tiger survey. This is one of the last bastions of tigers in, in all of Southeast Asia and it's vitally important we preserve these tigers because when they're extinct they've gone. There's nothing we can do about that. It's never been more important to support these brave men and women and the communities who are fighting to keep wildlife alive. Together with your help, we can turn the tide on extinction. We won't have another chance, and so we must act today before it's too late. Thank you very much. This year, we find ourselves fighting a wildlife emergency unlike any other we have seen before. And without your help, we might not win. Despite the unprecedented challenges wildlife now face, however, we are committed to supporting our frontline conservation partners and have pledged to maintain full levels of support across our whole portfolio this year, despite the challenges we face. Financially, this will stretch us to our limits, but to do nothing is to accept a bleak future. You have trusted us to conserve some of the world's most endangered species for over 36 years, but we need your help more than ever before to continue my grandfather's legacy. Withdrawing or reducing our support now could mean the difference between success or failure, a ranger's life or death, survival or extinction. Thank you. Today marks the launch of our emergency appeal to help our ground-based conservation partners adapt to the challenges they face as a result of the global uncertainty. By donating £220 today, you could help fund a team of wildlife rangers operating on the front line. £100 could provide emergency rescue supplies that would save the life of a newly orphaned elephant who, tragically, lost their mother to poaching. £25 could help provide education packs for children in remote wildlife locations. By investing in future generations, you could inspire the conservation leaders of tomorrow, today. Something my grandfather used to say was that man has this arrogant assumption that the natural world is ours to do with it as we wish. Sadly, what we wished for has also led to one of the most economically and socially toxic pandemics in history. A pandemic caused by our abuse of wildlife. A recent scientific report highlighted that over 70% of emerging diseases and almost all known pandemics are zoonoses. That means a disease that can be transmitted from animals to humans. A primary cause of this transmission is the consumption and exploitation of endangered wildlife. We used to talk about the illegal wildlife trade being a multi-billion dollar industry, which of course it is still, and which shocked people. Now, however, we look at the economic impact of COVID born from the illegal wildlife trade, and it pales in comparison. The cost of prevention by closing down wildlife markets and ending wildlife trade is a drop in the ocean compared to the recovery costs we now face and will in the future. As an apex species whose power and dominance has never before been seen in the history of our planet comes great responsibility, one which we have shunned in place of quick wins and rapid gains. It is this very disregard for nature and for the natural world which has brought us into what many have found to be one of the darkest and most challenging times in our personal lives. Economies are in freefall, global friendships are fracturing and mother nature is on her knees. And why? Because we have forgone empathy and compassion for greed and for growth. As we have witnessed, the pandemic has affected everybody, from those sitting in the most powerful of boardrooms to the most vulnerable and deprived communities across the world. 
What we need is everyone's voice and everyone's action to harness the collective power needed in order to make transformative change to the way we interact and treat nature and wildlife across all walks of life and in every sector. None have been more affected than the brave men, women and communities we work with and support. With the collapse of the tourist industry overnight, it wasn't just global economies that were sent into freefall, but local economies upon which people's very lives rely. Now forced to engage in the illegal wildlife practices and hunting simply to survive, wildlife paid the price. Often I get asked if all the money pumped into global wildlife initiatives is making a difference, which by the way is a fraction of what gets spent on global corporation marketing budgets or investment into new and obscure technologies that hardly ever make the market. And whilst it's often hard to quantify, the simple answer is that if the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation and many of our sector colleagues didn't exist, we wouldn't be talking about species on the brink, but those who have already been pushed into extinction. Elephants, pangolins, painted dogs and tigers, to name a few, would already be confined to the history books of tomorrow. We fight to keep them here today. But we can't do this without you. This is one of the hardest asks we have ever had to make considering the financial climate, unpredictability and volatility of life as we know. But we can't afford to sit idly by and allow our 36 years of conservation efforts to falter. I ask you now, tonight, to stand with us to end wildlife crime and to turn the tide on extinction. Whatever you feel you're able to give, the cost of your next coffee, shopping trip, holiday or upgrade, or even your upcoming Christmas presents, please consider donating it instead. I promise if you do, we will all go to bed a little safer tonight. We bought on the pandemic, which now threatens us all, but we also have the power to stop another one and to forge a healthier coexistence with the natural world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Georgina, for that. I see Tash sent a message saying, Peanut, that's Georgina's nickname, Peanut, you're inspiring. Thank you and everyone at DSWF. And I think that says it all. I think it gives you a pretty good idea of what we're up to and what we're trying to achieve. I'd have to say a lot of people in that film are, are friends of mine, and I can honestly tell you that they've devoted their entire lives to wildlife conservation. And you're all being so lovely and supportive to the foundation in your messages too. So thank you very much. I just love the fact that so many people feel so passionate about wildlife and give up their Friday evening to help and support conservation efforts like this. Tash, you just messaged, is watching from the kitchen in her apron. Will from Bristol, which is my hometown. And I see Will's dad says hello, but says hello to Will, not to the rest of us. Harry Dobell, who we heard from earlier, is watching with his family, very proud family, I'm sure. Dion and Jenny have joined us from South Africa. Piers Sawyer and Scout in Glasgow. Too many to mention you all, sadly, but thank you all very much for supporting. So far, we have raised £58,834. Don't forget, if you haven't bid anything in the silent auction yet, or you haven't donated loads of money, please do it now. I think we're showing the QR code on the screen and the essential link in a moment. As you heard just now, it doesn't cost all that much. Think about it like this. You know, the cost of a dinner for four people in a restaurant or a pub, which you could well have been doing tonight instead in the normal world, that would pay for an anti-poaching scout's rations and salary for a whole month. One meal for four people. That's all it takes to make so much difference. OK, so we're sort of coming to the end of the evening. We've kept one of the highlights until last. And this is something really special. One of our great ambassadors is the celebrated soprano, Laura Wright. 
such a sensational classical and popular singer, popular meaning popular music, well, and popular celebrated, you know what I mean? And tonight she's going to perform two songs specially for us. So Laura Wright. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Laura Wright, and it is my pleasure to be joining you for this very unique David Shepherd Wildlife Ball. From my home to yours, I am an incredibly proud ambassador for the foundation, and it has been my joy to see firsthand the work that they have done over the years. I'm going to perform two pieces for you now. The first is by French composer Ronaldo Hahn, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. This next song is Andra Day's Rise Up. Please do give generously throughout tonight's event. You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round. You can't find the fire, but I see it in you, so we're going to walk it out.
Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. Oh, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Laura, who, as I said, is one of our great ambassadors. Well, that's almost it for tonight. Not quite. Thank you all very much for tuning in and for supporting all this critical conservation work. And by that, I mean Ray in Upper Farringdon. We've got Jill and Co in Sutton Benger. Hello. Bandit and Friends in Surrey and so many more of you. Thank you. I can see from the list and from all the comments you're sending in that there are loads of people watching. You've done so much for wildlife conservation and I know have done a huge amount to help the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation as well. You know who you are and we are eternally grateful. The world is a better place thanks to you. So I can tell you, we have raised £64,000. That is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Well done. Thanks for generally, uh, bidding so generously and donating so much. I, I can honestly say it'll make a massive difference to the Foundation's work. And hopefully we're going to raise even more between now and 10pm. Got a little bit of time, another hour when the silent auction will close. So I really hope you've enjoyed the evening and feel inspired to do even more for the world's wildlife, whatever you can, wherever you can. Um, so it's good night for me, but before we finish, I'd just like to hand over for a final farewell to Georgina Lamb. So here's Georgina. It has got to that time in the evening where I get to say thank you for what has been an incredible online event for wildlife. Normally our wonderful friends at the Dorchester Collection would have been hosting us and sponsoring the event this year. So firstly, I just want to thank them, despite us not being there in person in London this year. To start with, Mark, our incredible host, but more importantly, our long-term friend and conservation advisor who helps guide so much of our work over the years. Thank you. You have embraced our virtual world and made tonight a fantastic evening, which I do, do hope you all enjoyed. I also want to thank our incredible silent auction donors who generously gifted their exclusive time, item, experiences, stunning artwork to help us raise vital funds. It is so appreciated. To our celebrity friends and the inspiring Harry Doble, who has reminded us all that we can all do our bit in whatever shape, form, however large or small. To the amazing West End kids and our incredible ambassador, Laura Wright, who blows me away with her performance every time. Thank you for all you've done to make tonight such a beautiful evening with your stunning and creative performances and for everything else you do to champion our cause. To Dan and all of my colleagues at DSWF who have made tonight a reality in very challenging circumstance. Work all every day to help keep wildlife safe. I'm incredibly proud of our team at DSWF, so thank you. My final two thank yous are to all of you who have tuned in tonight, our supporters and wonderful friends. Some of you have stood by us for over 36 years, and also to those who are newer to David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation. None of this would have been possible without your ongoing support. And finally, to our conservation partners around the world who are on the front line fighting wildlife crime and keeping wildlife safe. We are in awe of what you do and we are so proud of what we can achieve together. 
We would love to stay in touch with each and every one of you. So please do sign up to hear from us, visit our website, follow us on social media, and keep up to date with our work to help turn the tide in extinction. You can continue to donate until 10 p.m. this evening on the silent auction and likewise over the weekend and many years into the future. I hope you've all had as much fun this evening as we have in bringing you this event. So finally, from my kitchen, thank you and good night.